Hi, I'm Marion Landry, Technical Marketing Manager for Autodesk. Now that you find out in part two of this tips and tricks series how to render your inventor model in 3ds Max design using a daylight system and mental ray rendering engine, let's simplify this rendering process and switch to iRay rendering engine. While looking closer at this quick render that I have created in Mental Ray, notice the graininess of the soft shadow, the graininess in the reflection, some of the transparency are not accurate, and that means you're going to have to start playing with the Mental Ray rendering settings, and you might not understand fully what they are, how they affect the quality of your image, and how slow this render is going to become, not to mention the trace bounce limit and the final gather precision. As well, if you start opening the mental ray rendering panel, it's quite extensive and you might not know what to do with all of these settings. Now, I highly suggest that if you're planning to render nice final images in mental ray, um, you read the mental ray white paper that I have produced a few years back. This is a very simplified approach depending on each case scenario, uh, rendering with mental ray, including rendering animation. So if you want to get into the details and the settings of mental ray rendering, do read the white paper. But what if you're not rendering with mental ray and you just want an easy, simple rendering solution? Well, we do have iRay rendering engine. So I'm going to switch to the iRay rendering engine here under the production mode NVIDIA iRay. And right away, you'll notice the difference in the rendering panel settings. The settings are quite minimal. You don't need to worry about any of the presets. The only thing you need to decide is how long you're going to render your image for. And I always suggest to render for an unlimited amount of time. And once you're satisfied with the rendering quality, you just stop the rendering. Right away when the render starts, you'll notice the high quality rendering you achieve from the iRay rendering engine. So basically iRay is a physically accurate rendering engine and it's a graphic card or GPU based rendering engine. So if you have the right graphic card, the rendering will be quite fast. So here I'm going to let it render for a few seconds and stop it once I'm satisfied with the quality. So if we compare these two images, you will notice that the mental ray images in the soft shadow, it was really grainy, whereas in the eye ray rendering engine, we have a nice soft shadow quality. Notice the glass as well, the refraction is accurate, the reflection is accurate. However, notice the difference in the reflection of the material apply on the ground between iRay and mental ray. iRay reads the reflection curvature of the material slightly different than mental ray, tends to be a little bit more accurate and therefore you might need to decrease the amount of reflection in some of the materials when using iRay rendering engine. Now notice that the seats and the body of the car seem to have a slight different feel and that is because iRay, because it's a physically based rendering engine, will only support physically based material and therefore not all the material are supported in iRay. So here I readjusted the time of the day so we can see the difference a little bit more. So in the viewport, my body is green and in the rendering, it's uh, actually black. So let's open the material panel to find out what that material is. So it's basically an Autodesk metallic paint. So it's a car paint and that is not supported by iRay. So basically, I'm going to change that. First, I'm going to copy the color because I do like that green. And I'm going to change this material to an arch and design material, which I know is supported by iRay and I'm going to just paste the green into the um, color slot and make it a glossy finish. So nothing more complicated than that. For the car seat, um, you know, I don't know which one of these uh, material is the car seat, so I can use the pick material tool. So I'm loading the brown letter. Again, I'm going to use an arch and design material. And I know that this have a uh, leather template that I can use. And I know that the arch and design material um, is uh, supported by iRay. So already the presets are done for me. I'm not going to adjust anything. I'm just going to leave it as is. And I'm going to press render again. And my problem is mainly fixed. So obviously you can customize your material as much as you want. You can load different Autodesk material. Most Autodesk material are supported by iRay. And if you want to find out 
more about which material are supported by iRay Rendering Engine, you can go under the help file, look for iRay Renderer, and look at the material and map supported by iRay. You'll notice here that the Autodesk material, with the exception of the metallic paint, is not supported. There's also a mention about the reflection here that are handled differently. It tells you the list of material that are supported, the list of map and shader, and all the information you need to know about iRay if this is the first time that you are rendering with it. So when it's time to switch from a mental ray scene to an eye ray scene, you might have slight modification to do to the material. You might need to change some of the material that are no longer supported in eye ray. But as you can tell, they're not major changes and they will be quite easy to handle once you are in eye ray. So nothing more complicated than that in iRay. There's actually no setting involved. You only have to decide how long you're rendering this image for and you have really nice photorealistic quality to your rendering. So highly suggested if you want to render still images of high quality. And here's the final render using iRay, which actually turns out that for this particular scene, was actually much faster to render using iRay for the quality I get with this rendering engine.